Hello everyone and welcome to the coalition. My name is Dana and I'm here to give a quick screen reaction to Don't Worry Darling. Now the reason why this is a screen reaction is because I've seen the movie. I've seen it in its entirety but I saw it months ago. I know people that just came back from the Venice Film Festival they just saw the movie and the reviews are going up and so I thought why not talk about some of the things that I really enjoyed and didn't like about the movie but this is not going to be a full review because I seen this months ago and I'm going to see this coming up this week and I'm going to give you a much larger in-depth review but I kind of wanted to kind of uh, what the appetite of what fans can expect from from this movie so right away this is a 1950 psychological drama that is directed and also starring olivia wilde now we've known her for book smart and we've known her from a lot of other projects but this is the first time that she's diving into the psychological bit of it all the twisted dark world that is created in this script and she really did a great job bringing everything out the kind of problem that really lies in it is the script. Um, the script starts off very strong, but it gets kind of weaker once we get the explanation behind it all. So what exactly is this movie about? Without much spoilers, because this movie does work best when nobody knows anything. When I saw it, there wasn't an advertisement. There wasn't a trailer. I just knew it started Florence Pugh, um, Harry Styles, uh, directed by Olivia Wilde, and something to do with 1950s. That's all I knew about it. I didn't even really know it was a psychological drama. Uh, we didn't have anything to go on, and that is the best way to kind of watch this movie because this is a psychological drama filled with different puzzle pieces that you have to kind of solve and figure out what's going on and you figure out what's going along alongside Florence Pugh who the entire time she thinks she's losing her mind whether or not that's the case can't say but she does a really great job she and the director and the cinematographer everyone else involved does a really great job of placing you in this world and making you feel that you're slowly losing your mind behind it so I really felt that this was a wonderful um, direction for Olivia Wilde. Uh, again, we're getting her to see her range. We saw it before with comedy. Now seeing this with this very drama-filled movie, it felt like she knew exactly what it was she was doing. The sad part is the script didn't know what it really wanted to do. And I felt that it started off really strong. The middle was great. It did a great job of making us question everyone, every person, everything around us. Um, what is real? What isn't real? Is this all inside of her mind? But when it came to the very end, the, the explanation of it all, the wrapping it all together with the bow, it fell apart to the point where if you really started to think about some of the things that you saw, it, things didn't really make any sense. I had questions. I had more questions than I had answers. And that was really unfortunate because what they built was a very strong movie. And Florence Pugh, Harry Style, Chris Pine, they really delivered. The entire cast really delivered in terms of acting, in terms of believability, in terms of placing you in this world where you are confused and you don't know what's going on, but you want more. I remember writing in my notes, what what the hell is going on? That was literally my entire notes because I did not understand what was going on, but I meant that in a good way. I didn't mean that in a confusing way. I just meant that in like, wow, this is really refreshing. This felt new. But when you come to that ending, you don't really stick the landing, which kind of made me sad. But I will say this. Um, as someone who really loves psychological dramas, it did fill my heart with joy. Um, I'm someone who likes, for example, Fresh, which starred Sebastian Stan. Um, I'm someone who likes to to read about like complicated what's going on minds of not a serial killer, but the mind of someone who is kind of slightly disturbed. Not the nonfiction, the fiction part. Um, but again, Florence Pugh is amazing, basically, in everything that she does. But with this movie, it really felt like her acting was taken to a new level. And you watch her mentally break down as everyone kind of tries to keep what's going on together. You see the desperation in people's eyes when they realize that their grip on reality could be slipping because of this woman. Um, while I can't really go into it, it really plays in on kind of the psychology of the 1950s, the 
placement of a wife, the placement of the woman. There's a lot of gaslighting everywhere. Anytime you try to question something, you're going to be gaslit about it. So it's really her trying to prove, one, I'm sane. Two, I know exactly what it is that I'm talking about. And three, everyone else is the one that's crazy. Um, Olivia Wilde, I would say, in the role of, of acting, she is okay. She she could have been better, but she is okay. But the movie strength really relies on Florence Pugh and Harry Styles. Their chemistry is top notch. Um, Harry Styles comes across as charming. There are moments where it can get really dark and really twisted, and he puts you in that role, and he you really kind of believe it, and you're like, what is going on? And you feel that he knows more than what he's telling. And you feel that also with Florence's character as well. And so it's a lot of we're trying to keep secrets from each other, but we're also trying to figure out how much each other knows. Um, the standout really has to belong to the delicious cinematography and the set designs. They really put you in this 1950s world. They really put you in the 1950s men working environment with the suits and the hats and the ties. And even with the partying, the dresses, the clothes, everything about it, it just feels really stylish like uh, like Great Gatsby when Boz Lerman, he directed it, kind of feels like that. And there is a lot of partying that goes on and, and there's a lot of things that, you know, they're trying to celebrate and also, again, trying to keep hidden. Um, like I said before, it's really best going in not knowing anything, kind of which is why this reaction is going to be bare minimum. I am going to see this movie again, either this week or next week at the at another screening. And therefore, I'm going to give you more details and explain more things without it being a huge spoiler. Uh, but I will give you a much larger synopsis of what is going on but this movie you know it, if you're a kind of person who loves psychological drama if you're a kind of person who's like what is happening I want to know and you like to solve the pieces together this is kind of the movie that for you but again it's it's not perfect that ending when it hits it's like oh okay, okay that was that was a bit of a letdown um Oh, right. Um, it's not perfect. And like I said, it has more questions than there is answers. Um, but what they do give you before it kind of falls apart is really good. It's really delicious and ju juicy. And I really like the direction that Harry Styles is doing in his acting career. He's creating, he's finding these really meaty roles that he can kind of sink his acting skills into and kind of play range. It's really easy to like, say, do a really simple I don't know, rom-com where you're the cute, charming person, but to dive deep into a character who has many layers and there is some darkness within everyone, it's really interesting to, 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 to watch him kind of flourish in that. I will say that the ending will probably provoke a lot of people. I can't say why, because that would be a spoiler, um, but it will be something that people might be talking about. I feel also that it works best. Yes, you can see it in theaters, but it really works best in streaming because it is a kind of movie where you want to watch again and again to kind of, oh, I missed that part over there. That thing over there, I didn't pay attention to, but that also plays into this. So, you know, there's a lot of different pieces that they put together to make this over this, this larger puzzle. So overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think that again it works for multiple uh, screenings viewings but it's not perfect and I really wish that they stuck that landing because they had the opportunity to create something that was unique creative and just downright like locks you into your seat like what is going on drama and they really didn't do that at the end but I will say Olivia Wilde as a director she did the best that she could with the script the cinematography again like I said is amazing the set design they really put you into that world and it's a really just great escape as a movie and Florence Pugh Harry Styles once again they're acting superb Olivia Wilde she really wasn't a standout for this Chris Pine he did the best that he could with the material that was given to him I think he came across as really charming really likable and then again we have another dark side to people and characters of what is really going on behind the scenes so I thought that it was a good movie overall so I will be back again later to have a much larger review, spoiler-free review of everything. But I just kind of wanted to jump into the conversation about what was going on with Don't Worry Darling.